2026 isn't just another year for SpaceX. It's the final proving ground. The company must land an uncrewed starship on the moon before year's end, or NASA's Artemis III falls apart. The solution? Starship Fishy 3 launches in Q1, followed by orbital refueling tests, payload deployments, and a dedicated lunar HLS prototype flying mid-2026. Each milestone builds toward one historic moment. But can SpaceX execute this chain perfectly with zero margin for failure? Let's dive right in. The skeptics have been loud, and honestly, they've had good reason to be. Internal documents leaked earlier this year suggested SpaceX might only manage an uncrewed Starship flight by 2027, pushing a crewed mission to 2028 or beyond. NASA's been watching closely, and their response was telling. They opened up competition for the Artemis III lander. Translation? They're not entirely convinced Starship will be ready. So what changed SpaceX's calculus? What makes them think 2026 is now achievable when so many doubt the timeline? The answer lies in a tightly choreographed sequence of upgrades and tests that must all succeed. This isn't about one dramatic moment. It's about building a chain where every link matters. Break one, and the entire plan collapses. SpaceX knows this, which is why they've engineered a month-by-month -month roadmap that leaves almost no room for error, but still maintains just enough contingency to handle reality. Everything begins with Starship V3 and Flight 12. This test flight, expected between late January and early February, represents the most consequential validation mission in Starship's history. V3 brings massive upgrades, redesigned grid fins that can withstand re-entry punishment, improved hot staging that won't shred the booster, enhanced heat shield durability, upgraded catch hardware for the Mechazilla arms, and crucially, the first real test of orbital refueling hardware. Flight 12 will expose whether these changes actually work or if they have introduced new problems that demand redesign. Here's the brutal truth. If Flight 12 uncovers major issues, the entire 2026 timeline compresses dangerously. But if it succeeds, SpaceX gains the momentum to accelerate everything downstream. Why does one test flight carry so much weight? Because V3 isn't just an incremental update, it's the foundation for every mission that follows. The Lunar Starship HLS variant will be built on V3's architecture. The orbital refueling demonstrations will use V3 systems. The payload deployment missions will rely on V3's reliability. Think of it this way. You can't build the fifth floor of a building if the ground floor has cracks. Flight 12 is SpaceX's chance to prove the foundation is solid. Assuming V3 validation succeeds, SpaceX faces its next challenge, actually reaching orbit and staying there. This sounds basic, almost trivial, given Starship's size and power. But reliable orbital insertion is the gateway capability that everything else depends on. Without it, there's no satellite deployment, no refueling tests, no lunar missions. Orbit isn't the finish line, it's the starting line. And SpaceX needs to cross it consistently, not just once. Once orbital operations stabilize, the company shifts to payload deployment, and this is where Starlink becomes strategically vital. Starship is designed to carry up to 50 Starlink Vashavi 3 satellites per launch. Massive, powerful units that dwarf earlier generations. These aren't just commercial assets. They're proof-of-concept missions. Every successful Starlink deployment demonstrates Starship's ability to transport cargo safely and precisely. Why does this matter for the moon? Because the skills required to deploy satellites in Earth orbit translate directly to delivering equipment, supplies, and infrastructure to lunar orbit and beyond. Each Starlink mission is effectively a dress rehearsal for lunar cargo operations. Here's where things get genuinely difficult. Recovery and landing. SpaceX's entire business model depends on rapid reusability, and that means bringing Starship home intact, repeatedly. But there's a deeper reason this matters for 2026. The guidance systems, navigation algorithms, engine throttling, and structural loads experienced during an Earth landing are the foundation for lunar landing capability. If Starship can't reliably land on Earth, where it has GPS, dense atmosphere for drag, and endless abort options, how can it possibly land on the moon, where there's no atmosphere, 
limited communication, and one shot to get it right. Earth landings aren't just about reusability economics. They're the proving ground for lunar descent. Now we reach the most technically complex piece of the entire puzzle, orbital refueling. This is the capability that makes or breaks Lunar Starship. Without it, the physics simply don't work. Starship cannot carry enough propellant to reach the moon, land, and return to Earth in a single launch. It must refuel in orbit, and not just once, potentially a dozen or more times depending on the mission profile. So how does SpaceX plan to validate this in 2026? The first orbital refueling tests are scheduled for mid-year, likely involving two Starship vehicles performing a carefully choreographed rendezvous. They'll dock, connect fluid lines, and attempt to transfer cryogenic propellant in the microgravity environment of orbit. This first test won't transfer huge amounts. It's about proving the interfaces work, the fluids flow correctly, and the systems remain stable. But subsequent tests must demonstrate repeatability. One successful transfer isn't enough. SpaceX needs to show they can do this reliably, mission after mission, because a single lunar landing might require 15 to 20 refueling flights to fill a Starship HLS waiting in orbit. Here's where SpaceX's parallel development strategy becomes clear. While flight tests continue, they're simultaneously building ground infrastructure for a propellant depot, a dedicated orbital gas station for Starship. SpaceX has already completed a depot power module demonstration, testing the electrical systems that would keep cryogenic propellants stable in orbit for extended periods. They've also activated a hardware-in-the-loop test bed that simulates real mission conditions using flight-ready components. This isn't theoretical work. It's engineering designed to compress the timeline between concept and operation. But even perfect vehicles mean nothing without the infrastructure to launch them frequently. This is where SpaceX's ground game matters enormously. At Starbase, Pad 2 is nearly ready for V3 operations, but sustained high-cadence launches require Pad 1 to return to service, ideally by late 2026. Two active pads enable parallel operations. One pad can prepare for launch, while the other handles booster recovery and refurbishment. Meanwhile, in Florida, Launch Complex 39A is getting upgraded for Starship operations, with SLC-37 coming online in 2027. This geographic distribution isn't just redundancy, it's operational flexibility. Different launch sites offer different orbital inclinations and mission profiles. Behind all these pads sits the Star Factory, SpaceX's manufacturing facility that's scaling to unprecedented levels. By mid-2026, it should reach full operational capacity, effectively becoming the world's first mass production line for orbital class rockets. This matters because SpaceX can't iterate fast or fly frequently without building vehicles quickly. The new Mega Bay 3 under construction will complement the existing two bays, allowing parallel assembly of multiple starships simultaneously. Production bottlenecks have delayed progress before. SpaceX is determined not to let manufacturing limit their 2026 ambitions. Testing infrastructure has been another historical bottleneck. The issues with Ship 33 and Booster 18 earlier this year exposed weaknesses in test procedures and facilities. SpaceX responded with substantial upgrades throughout 2025, and more improvements are planned for 2026. The goal? Testing that matches the pace of production and the demands of operational flight rates. All of these elements, V3 validation, orbital operations, payload deployment, recovery systems, refueling capability, Ground infrastructure, production scaling, converge on a single target, the uncrewed Starship HLS mission. This specialized lunar variant must launch sometime between early and mid-2026, giving SpaceX enough margin to conduct system checks, integrated testing, and critically time to fix problems. Because there will be problems. Hardware this complex never works perfectly the first time. The HLS mission isn't optional or symbolic. It's a contractual requirement from NASA and the fundamental proof point that determines whether Artemis III happens on schedule. Without a successful uncrewed landing, NASA cannot justify sending astronauts to the moon aboard Starship in 2027. The political stakes are enormous. America hasn't returned humans to the lunar surface in over five decades, and China is rapidly advancing its own lunar program. Early success in 2026 doesn't just validate technology, 
It secures geopolitical momentum and demonstrates leadership in space exploration when rivals are pushing hard. Can SpaceX actually pull this off? The timeline is aggressive, arguably optimistic. But unlike previous ambitious announcements, this plan has structure. Each milestone has clear technical objectives, realistic contingencies, and builds logically on the previous achievement. That doesn't guarantee success, but it makes success achievable rather than fantastical. So here's what 2026 really comes down to. SpaceX has one year to transform skepticism into undeniable proof. If they execute this sequence, V3 validation, orbital refueling, and that crucial uncrewed HLS landing, they don't just save Artemis III, they redefine what's possible. But if any link breaks, delays compound fast, and NASA's confidence erodes further, what makes this different from past promises? The specificity. Flight 12 in Q1, HLS prototype mid-year. Refueling tests by summer. This isn't hype. It's an engineering roadmap that either works or fails publicly. The stakes extend beyond one landing. China isn't waiting. Success in 2026 gives America momentum to build permanent lunar infrastructure and establish operational experience before rivals arrive. That's real leadership. Sustained presence, not symbolic flags. The moon is closer than it's been in decades. Whether space us reaches it depends on execution, not ambition. We'll be tracking every milestone as it happens. What do you think? Can SpaceX pull off this timeline? Drop your thoughts below. Subscribe to Space Update 24 hours and hit notifications to catch every development in this historic race. If this breakdown added value, smash that like button and share it. Thanks for watching.